Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in tonight to the hot spot. It is great to have you back at this place. Amen. With the word of God is building us up and encouraging us and fortifying our hearts and minds. And it is good to see you. So listen, do me a favor right out the gate. Go ahead and share this broadcast on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. That means you can actually send the link uh, from YouTube. Let someone know that we are live tonight in the name of Jesus or on Facebook. Simply hit the share button in advance uh, of this word being shared in advance of this word going forth because we know that God always meets us. Amen. So there's no doubt that he will say something to us tonight that will enrich us and make us better for having been here at the hot spot. I am a, a co-pastor Susan Graham, and it's good to see you, you and you. Amen. Just let me know that you're here by throwing your name into the comment section. Let me know where you're viewing from. I just want to say, hey, hello, and how you doing? <laughs> but before I do that, let me just um, do a couple of house, quick housekeeping things I just want to bring before you that we are at the well. This is my Bible study experience each and every single Monday night on Zoom at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is uh, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I believe it equates to something like 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast. And we have been encountering Jesus at every turn. I say this every week as I come before you because we have been walking through the book of the gospel of Luke, if you will, and it has been a journey. It has been an extremely wonderful experience for all of us. And I'm telling you, it is an enriching time of study. So if you have not already joined us at the well uh, and uh, participate in our weekly studies, then you need to do that because you are missing out on another great, great Susan Graham ministry experience. Amen. I also want to let you know that I am on the Inspired Living Network. That is a television television broadcast um, called Graced with Fire every single Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Living Network, which can be viewed simply by downloading the app on your phone and viewing it through the Inspired Living Network app. Or you can go on the Inspired Living Network uh, website and view it there as well. Amen. And then we thank God for being able to view it also via Amazon Fire, and Roku TV. So there are many, many, many ways to connect with this ministry, Grace with Fire on Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. That is 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for those of you who are on the West Coast. So let me go ahead and greet you in Jesus' name. I want to start out by greeting uh, Elder Daisy Jackson. Thank God for her being here tonight. Blessings, blessings to her. Such a beautiful woman of God. I thank God for my assistant pastor, Elder Francis Smith, also viewing this evening. Thank God for you, you and you who are here viewing by Facebook Live and YouTube Live. So let's see. I see Sister Marcia Duplessis. Oh, God bless you. Good to see you in the house tonight. Blessings to you, my dear sister and friends. Sister Sandra Bracho is here viewing from, I believe it is still sunny Barbados. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for me to track you, lady, but I believe you're still in Barbados and I greet you in Jesus name. And then I thank God for my dear sister and friend, Sister Roseanne George, who is here tonight as well. Good to see you two nights in a row. Uh, sister Nandy is also here. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Minister Rowe is here this evening. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Amen. And it is great to have you back. Wonderful to have you back. Sister Stephanie Jones is here. God bless you, Sister Stephanie. Good to see you. Thank you for so much for joining in on this broadcast. Sister Jean Jones is also here. Thank you so much for viewing as well. Sister Lisa Special One McMillan is joining us tonight. Welcome to the hot spot. Great to see. Uh, let's see. I want to show you what Minister Rowe is doing, and I want to encourage you to do the same. Please, please, please throw the names of those whom you would love to have be a part of this broadcast and share in this experience. Join us. Just throw their names in the comment section and call them in. Thank you so much for continuing to do that. Sister Kimberly Harry is here. Blessings to you. I've not seen your name before, so I want to welcome you. This is your first time at the hotspot. God bless you, Brother Richard Dickerson. <clears throat> Good to see you as well. Sister Sherry Parrish is also here. Uh, Co-pastor Evangelist Mary Frazier is with us this evening. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God for Sister Joy May Joyce Maynard here tonight as well. Blessings to you. Sister Petrina Wilson is also with us. Great to have you. Thank God for, let's see who else. <clears throat> Sister Johnson is here. Amen. Blessings to you. God bless you, woman of God. Sister Judy Charles has joined us tonight, and I'm excited to see you here with us. Sister Davina, or Deve uh, just Davine Smith. God bless you. I've not seen your name before, so thank you so much for choosing to tune in. And Span Sam, blessings to you. God bless you, sir. Amen. Get to see Sister Jones uh, with us here tonight. That's Gail Jones, if you will. We have quite a few Joneses in the chat, so we need to make a distinction, right? Deborah Jones is also here. God bless you, Sister Deborah. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Chavers Williams here, Lily Chavers Williams. Thank God for you, Sister Lily. Is 
been a minute. God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, Elder Prince is also here. Amen. Lifeway is definitely in the house tonight. Blessings to you, Brother Ty. It's good to see you, my friend. Praise God for Evangelist Maggie Watson. Blessings to you, as well. Sister Diana Bragg has joined us. God bless you. Sister Cecilia Linton Brathwaite is also here this evening. Thank you so much for coming on through. Sister Marquita Bobbitt is joining us from Decatur, Illinois. It's great to see you. Praise God for Sister White being here as well. Blessings to you, my dear sister. And thank God for Aaron Reed, the last name on my list. Amen, but certainly not on the Lord's. And so we thank you all for taking the time to view and to tune in this evening. Let's go to the word of God. It's a very simple scripture, very, very simple scripture. But before I bring it before you, I just want to uh, introduce you to our topic this evening. Many of you may not have had the time to really see the banner as I just threw it up, but let me uh, just let you know, this is talking about my season of acceleration, my time, my season of acceleration, okay? And uh, I just want you to know that God is moving, amen, expeditiously in this season. That's a big old SAT word, but you ought to get to know it because God, amen, is not slowing down for anybody. I need you to go ahead and put that in the chat. God is not slowing down for anybody, <laughs> Amen. If he has plans to move things forward, he is going to move it forward and he's not stopping. He's not slowing down for anyone. He's not changing his plans. He's not altering anything that he has put together. God is moving forward and we need to get with the agenda of heaven in this season. Somebody needs to go ahead on and put that in there. You need to get with the agenda of heaven in this season. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for that. All right. So we're looking at a verse that has been sitting heavy in my spirit. One verse, one simple verse sitting very heavy in my spirit for about a good hot, <laughs> a good hot two weeks now. I have been really challenged to, um, to, huh, how should I say, overcome what this verse is expressing. So let's take a look at it. It's Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. And it simply says this, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. I'm going to say it again. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And again, that's Proverbs 13, 12. I want to read it to you from the New Living Translation because it puts it so much more simply. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope that's put off, hope that doesn't show up when we want it to, hope that doesn't seem to be in transit to us, hope that doesn't even seem to be anywhere near us. <laughs> when that's put off, it makes the heart sick. It makes the heart long for some things. It makes the heart pine. It makes the heart stew. It makes the heart feel regretful. It makes the heart feel a little bit bitter, y'all, okay? Um, the, the Hebrew word for sick is the word kala. It means to become weak. It means to become sick or to become diseased. You understand what I'm trying to say? When hope does not look like it's in the room, when there seems to be no hope of rope for you or for me, it makes the heart diseased. It makes the heart become weak. It has no strength. It becomes grieved and even becomes sorry. Am I talking to somebody tonight? Am I talking right? Has anybody ever been in a place in space where you felt like, dear God, is there any hope for this situation? Is there any hope for what I'm feeling? Is there any hope for what I'm going through? You know, we consult professionals about things. And I'll just use an example that I think we can all identify with. We consult professional uh, physicians about our health. And we, you know, we, we were dealing with certain health conditions, some of us. And as we were talking to our doctors or our nurse practitioners or our um whatever, physical therapist, you know, we, we are, we, we're depending on them. We're hoping that they will somehow be able to cast a good light on what could very well be a difficult and bad health situation that we're dealing with. Okay. And we're sitting in the office and we're hoping that their expert opinion will somehow be able to inflate our expectations about, you know, our progress, um, about getting better, about our healing. Is it going to happen? OK, and then when you when you don't hear the news that you want to hear or you don't hear the news that you want to hear as quickly as you'd like to hear it or you hear news that says, well, you're going to get there, but it's going to take some time. Well, you know, it'll get better, but it's going to take some time. 
That's the last thing some of us want to hear. It, it feels to us like what this text is describing here in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It's, it feels like hope deferred. <laughs> it, it feels like hope that's been delayed and sort of, you know, impeded. It feels like hope that's not going to show up anytime soon. And so in your mind, you're sitting here going, wait, hold up. I have to, I have to put up with this for how, how much longer? <laughs> how, um, uh, the season that I thought I was about to walk out of, I'm supposed to be going through this for how much longer? And so you you become discouraged. Am I talking right to somebody? Now, listen, you can tell the truth and shame the devil tonight. All you got to do is say you're talking right. <laughs> you don't even got to tell me what it is that I'm speaking to specifically in your life. But it brings on a sense of disappointment. It brings on a sense of discouragement. And if we're not careful, the word of God says our heart, which really specifically speaks to our soul, becomes diseased. It becomes infected with a sense of hopelessness. It becomes um, hmm, troubled and heavy and weighted down. And, and all of a sudden you find that your attitude is affected, right? Because you were hoping for something and it just doesn't seem to come to pass. Now I'm talking to folk who may be single and are hoping to be married. They are hoping to find that, that, that uh, person that God wants to connect them to that destiny uh, person, that person that is tied to their destiny. They're hoping to find that, that, that life partner. And, and it just seems like hope deferred year after year, relationship after relationship. God help me, marriage after marriage for some of us, right? There's hope deferred of wanting to achieve that ultimate connection with our soulmate, if you will. Um, for some of us, it's that educational pursuit. Oh my gosh, um, am I never going to finish this degree program? When in the world am I going to graduate? Like, when is this going to happen? And we're struggling with that. For some of us, it's a job promotion. Um, when is my boss going to see me? When are they going to finally acknowledge my skill sets and, and actually treat me as though I bring value to the table and I actually somehow am an asset to this company? Hope deferred. Everybody else seems to be moving up that proverbial chain. And you're just sort of stuck in a place of limbo, hovering in the same position for years, waiting to see something different. Am I talking to someone who may be chasing a business and really, really wants to see this business take off, but you just can't seem to get it off paper, okay? And it's just hope deferred. You're applying for this loan, that loan, small business loans, and things don't seem to come together. It's hope deferred. It's a, it's a stagnation. It's a lack of movement or progress forward. I'm talking to some of you tonight who may be dealing with ministry and you want to start a ministry and the ministry ministry is not taking off. And you're wondering, God, how come everybody else's stuff is jumping off? I see people on Facebook and their stuff is going somewhere. I see people on YouTube and their things are going somewhere. Why can't I find a backer? Where is my investor? Where's the person that's pushing me? And it's hope deferred. I'm using all these examples because these are things we can relate to. I'm speaking into specific situations because I believe that God is speaking to you tonight. I want you to know that you are walking in your season of acceleration. So what I, who I'm talking to tonight, let me tell you who my audience is. My audience is those of you who can identify with the scenarios and situations I just described, with the feelings that I've just described. I'm talking to those of you who knows what it feels like to wait on something a minute. OK, and to be fair, it, it hasn't been a minute. It's been a lot longer than a minute. But, you know, you've been waiting for a minute now. OK, and you've been hearing David say in your mind, in your in the mind of your spirit, in the mind of your heart, wait on the Lord and be of what? good courage and he will strengthen your heart. And then he goes on to reiterate what he said in the beginning. Wait, I say on the Lord, just in case you didn't hear me the first time, let me say it again. Wait, I say, did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? On the Lord. This is a God who's worth waiting for. This is a God whose promises are so awesome. They're worth waiting for. This is a God whose yea and his amen can be backed up with all of the resources of heaven. So wait, I say, don't get discouraged. I say, hope I say, because if you don't hope and if you don't see it, if you don't trust in the God that you're hoping in, your heart's going to get sick. It's going to get diseased. It's going to become weak. And every time something happens that gives you even a glimmer of hope, your, 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 your expectations shoot up, but then you don't see it. And then it falls again. And let me tell you something. Some of us, some of us have found it real expensive to live this way. Who am I talking to tonight? How many of you have actually stopped hoping for things because it just it, it just hurts too much to hope? 
Come on, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Somebody, you just need to tell on yourself and say, it hurts too much to hope. Susan, the truth about it is, it's not that I don't trust God. It's not that I don't have faith in God, but sometimes it hurts too much to hope. I used to hear my husband say, uh, Overseer Graham, he used to say um, for years and years and years, he'd say, Susan, you know, somebody can dream. One can dream because dreaming is free. I'm here to tell you <laughs> at the risk, at the risk of disagreeing with that statement. Yes, it is free in the sense that it take, it costs you nothing tangibly to close your eyes and dream. To close your eyes and imagine yourself sitting in a brand new car, a car that you don't have to encourage to, to turn on, a car that you don't have to speak to and lay hands on and begin to speak in your prayer language and go into tongues just to get the ignition to start. I'm trying to tell you, some of y'all are laughing, but some of us are driving those Flintstone cars. You know what I'm saying? You're two steps away from having to push it with your foot as you're sitting inside of it. Some of us are sitting on a milk cart, okay, trying to trying to control the wheel. And we got a bicycle horn for the car horn. We, you, know, you hear? You got, a, you got a rope tied around your waist and that's your seatbelt. Some of us are dealing with some really rough situations when it comes to the things that we need to see God do. And, and I've heard, yeah, I've heard that statement that dreaming is free. And so tangibly, yes, it is free in the sense that you don't have to pay anybody to close your eyes and imagine it. You don't have to pay a price to close your eyes and, and just see yourself in that new house, right? No, you don't have to pay an entrance fee to walk into that, that, that new home that you could just see with that long hallway and those beautiful, long winding staircases and that huge eating kitchen. You want to try, you understand what I'm trying to say? We, we don't have to pay a tangible ticketed price to enjoy a dream. But can I tell you that it'll cost you in other ways? It'll cost you in your emotions. It'll cost you in your feelings. It'll cost you in that place called hope. It's expensive sometimes to dream. I heard Bishop T.D. Jakes put it like this. He said, sometimes it's expensive to have a vision. It'll cost you something. It'll cost you in your expectations. It'll cost you in, in, in you sitting down and writing stuff out. You know, when the word of God encourages us and, and, and the prophet Habakkuk encourages us and he says, write the vision and make it plain and you're sitting down and you're writing for hours and days and weeks and months and sometimes for some of us yay i'm gonna testify years okay and we don't see it it costs you something and let me tell you when it really costs you something you think that's expensive it'll let me tell you what really takes me out the game when i am still sitting in a place called faith and in a place called hope and i'm holding on to something called expectation and i see somebody else okay who's not even trying to look for God, who's not even trying to live for God. And they have the same hope, the same dreams, and they're running past me with their vision and they're accelerating past me with their accomplishments and their life achievements. And I'm still sitting in the same place five years later, 10 years later, 15 years later, and I still don't see it coming my way. Let me tell you, home girl, home girl starts to feel a little some type of way because it's like, okay, God, I'm sorry, but I'm serving you. Okay, God, I'm like David. Early in the morning, will I seek the old God? I'm chasing you. I'm a God chaser. Let me tell you something. I am one who pursues his heart and I'm sitting here and I'm still stuck. Hope deferred, saints of God, it makes your heart downright diseased. It makes it weak and it makes it sick because it's expensive to dream. I tell you, dreaming will cost you something. But how many of you know that the word of God reminds us through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter one, it says that the God that we serve, mm -mm -mm, he watches over his word to perform it. The God that we serve watches over every single promise in his word to accomplish it. If God spoke something over you, I dare say you need to trust this God that we serve. He is a promise keeper. He is a need meter. He's a God that opens doors because he himself is a door. He's a way maker. I promise you he will do just what he said. God watches over his word to perform it. And then he goes on and confirms it in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, when he says, for I know the thoughts. Come on now, y'all know it. You need to put it in chat. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, thoughts to prosper you, thoughts to give you an expected end, thoughts that will push you forward, thoughts, hallelujah, that will cause you to see things you've never seen before. This is the God that we serve. He is a promise keeper. Amen. He is an oath maker and an oath taker and a vow maker and a promise keeper. He'll do just what he said. So though our 
uh, topic or our main scripture for tonight, our base scripture comes from uh, Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred make it the heart diseased or sick or weak, okay, or sorrowful. But when the desire cometh, come on now, it is a tree of life. I need to share something with you that I literally just shared with someone. And I have to share it with you because this word right here is powerful. I want to say, and um, hopefully you'll be able to quote me on this. It should be Psalm 92. It should be Psalm 92. Amen. <laughs> yeah, Lord. It is Psalm 92, verses 13, 14, 15. Matter of fact, hold up. Let's go to verses 12 through 15. Psalm 92, verses 12 through 15. And here's what it says. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13, wait, wait, wait for it, love. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth. Now, this is my favorite verse in the whole chapter. Hold up. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Come on. Can I tell you something? Can I tell? Let, let's just stop and park the car right here. First of all, look at what God says. And then look at what he says in these two distinct places in scripture. Proverbs 13 and 12. The latter part of that says part B. But when the desire cometh. In other words, when the thing that you and I have been desiring, when it shows up. Hey, come on, God. When it shows up, see, God is saying in part A of this verse, I know you've been waiting on it. I know you've been waiting on it so long and I know you haven't seen it. I know you've been praying on it. Hey, I'm going to hit somebody right where it hurts. I know you've been sowing seeds on it. That's right. I know you've been planting seeds. I know you've been sowing into Susan Graham Ministries. I know you've been paying your tithe. I know you have been giving offerings above and beyond what you bring home uh, as a part of your gross income. I know that you have been putting money, the, the, those love, you know, those love handshakes that you do in, in church. I love them handshakes where people just come to you and they got a 20 or a 50 or a hundred rolled up and they just shake your hand and say, how you doing pastor? And they just release you and let you go. And you got a little blessing up in there. You can buy lunch. You can pay your bill. That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to tell you, I know the scripture is saying, I know you've been doing that. I see you. I see you minister role. I see how you've been seeding. I see you, Sister Cynthia Clark. I see you, Sister Deborah Jones. I see you, Elder Gwendolyn Prince. I see you, Elder uh, Daisy Jackson. I see you, Sister Gail Jones. I see you, um, Sister Sherry Parrish. I see the seeds that you've been dropping. I see you, Sister Cheryl Williams. I see you, Sister Clestine Critchlow. I see you, Minister Jacqueline Graves. I see you, Minister Cecilia Brathwaite. I see what you have been doing. I see what you have been sacrificing. I say, I watch you every day. I see your faith to believe me when you can't pay that bill and you're still sowing seeds. I see your faith to trust me when you don't know how you're going to cover that cost that came out of nowhere. You know, the car that broke down, you know, the windshield that got cracked that you weren't uh, planning for and did not budget for, you know, the muffler that all of a sudden sounds like a big 18 wheeler truck. When you drive down the road, you know, I see you and how you pay your tithe in spite of what life looks like and what life brings to you. I see how you sacrifice your time. There are many of you, the word of God says, that I have seen so in many tears. Come on, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You have sown, come on, you have sown in many tears. But God says you're about to reap in joy because my name is Jehovah El Ra. I am the God who sees and I see you. I see your labor of love. I see your sacrifice. I see what you've put in the ground. And I'm here to tell you that I am the Lord of the harvest. Not only am I Jehovah El Ra, but I'm the God who knows how to coax a harvest out of the ground. And no matter how tied up the ground wants to be here uh, in the book of Exodus, it says that at times when we pray, the ground becomes brass to no. The ground becomes iron to us. At times when we pray, the ground, the, the air or the heavens become brass to us. But God says the, 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 the soil of your life, 
will no longer be iron to you in this season. I'm about to break some stuff up. I'm about to break up some fallow ground. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to decree and declare that tonight that the God I serve, the God of my provision, Jehovah Jireh, the God of my harvest, he is about to break up some hard stuff. He's about to break up the ground of my life. I hear God say, I'm speaking to the ground and I'm coaxing your harvest out of the ground because I've seen how you have sown in many tears and you have hoped on some things and you've been trusting for some things and not without merit because I am a God who can be trusted. I am a God who can be hoped in. In other words, you can put your hope in me because I'm a God that fulfills all of my promises. For all of the promises of God, they are yea and they are amen. You need to put that in the chat too. All the, pro not some, not most, Mm -mm, not many, but all of the promises of God. In other words, my mouth does not write checks, hallelujah, that my power can't cash. My mouth, God says, does not write checks that my throne can't cash. I am a God that if I said it, I will do it. And if I spoke it, I will bring it to pass in the mighty name that is above every single name I know. This God that I serve is able. Hallelujah. He is my Ephesians 3 and 20 God. He is able to do the exceeding, the abundantly, and the above all that I can ask or think. When I have done exceeding, then I will do abundantly. And when I have done exceeding and abundantly, I will do above. And then when I'm done with above, I will do all. Come on, this is a God who operates in tiers and levels. He's a God who knows how to bless you in di on different levels. You hear? He blesses you on... Mm. In abundance, above, exceeding, and all, my God, I want to thank you for being that kind of God. That's the kind of God that we serve. He says, yeah, 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 yeah. I see you being crushed by hope. <laughs> I've seen you being crushed by false hope, hope that sometimes tricks you. There, there, there's some things that bling, don't they? But not everything that glitters is gold. There's some things that bling and it makes you think that God is behind that thing because it's blinging. But God is saying, no, there's some things that have lured you into a place of false hope. People have given you false expectations. There have been some folk that told you, my God, you know what? You know what tries me when I meet people who tell me stuff like, oh, woman of God, I'm going to call you to my church. I'm going to invite you to my church to come preach. It's been five years. Where's the invitation? Not that I'm looking for one, because I got to tell you, I'd rather pray before I preach. I'll be honest. OK, I'd rather teach before I preach. I'll be straight up honest. I will turn down a preaching assignment in a hurry before I will the opportunity to pray or the opportunity to teach. But I'm here to tell you, folk will make promises to you. They'll lift your expectations. They'll raise your expectations. You go on a job interview. We'll call you. It's only been six months. I'm still waiting for the phone call. I know I put my phone number and my email on the resume. You know, it's like you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're hoping and people in situations and circumstances are building your hope. There are people who are struggling in their health tonight and you go to the doctor and there's something that he says that builds your hope and makes you think that, OK, I'm going to get over this. And then there's a setback. Right. And so it almost lures you into a sense of false hope. And I'm not saying God's not going to heal you. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there are things that come to take that hope away from you as quickly as the hope comes is as quickly as it dissipates because life happens. But can I tell you that God says, God says hope deferred will make your heart disease sick, weak and sorrowful, but hold up. There is a but here. There is a but here. And where you see God put a but, that means hope, <laughs> hope is not lost. That means there is hope. So hope may have been delayed, okay? Because that's really the word that we use, we need to use to describe this situation. The hope that has been delayed for some reason, the hope that has been restrained and held back for some reason, I'm now about to let that thing loose. And when it looses itself, God says there is going to be a season of acceleration. When the desire cometh, when the thing that you have been pining for, yearning for, when the yen of your very soul begins to shows up, okay, and appears out of seemingly nowhere after weeks and months and days and years of hoping and decades of hoping, God says when it comes, it's going to spring up like a tree of life, which brings me back to Psalm chapter, uh, uh, not chapter, but Psalm 92, verse 12. 13, 14, and 15. But let me read to you again what verse 12 says. The righteous shall flourish like what? Like a palm tree. 
okay? Or right here, a tree of life. It will flourish like a tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The cedar tree is one of the hardest woods that you can ever use. Cedar wood is very hard. Cedar wood is extremely durable. Cedar wood endures, which is why cedar is so expensive. But cedar also has wonderful repelling properties. Insects, okay, uh, that, that are moths, such as moths, that like to come into our closets and eat away at the fabric of our clothing and things like that. Many hangers, clothing hangers are made out of cedar wood. Uh, you've got all, you, you can have a cedar wood closet if you'd like, okay, that literally repels things and, and forms of pestilences and things that are bugging you. And so cedar wood is referred to a, a wood that is strong, that is durable, that is mighty, a wood that stands the test of time, but a wood that repels things that have been bugging you, a wood that repels things that could otherwise bring damage and destruction. So the word of God says that the righteous, the folk like you and me who have been waiting and hoping on the things of God and doing what David said, waiting on the Lord and trying to be at our very best of good courage and then still turning around and waiting on the Lord some more. He says, those righteous folk, you're about to flourish. My God, I want to tell you what the word flourish means here in the Hebrew. Hebrew. The word flourish here is the word para, okay? P-A-R-A-H. And it means to bud. It means to sprout. It means you're getting ready to bloom. It means to send out shoots from the earth up from the ground. So there, it will, there is going to be a breaking through from underneath the surface. In other words, the blessings that God is about to bring to you is hidden underneath the surface. OK, that's what he's saying in this text. When he says you're about to flourish, he's referring to something that right now is in a season of hiding. How many of you are experiencing a season of hidden favor? Come on. You just need to go ahead and throw that up in the chat. I'm going to wait. I'm going to give you a minute. Go ahead and put that in the chat. Susan, that's me. I'm in my season of hidden favor. I don't always see the goodness of God right up in front of me. I don't always see what God is working on behind the scenes because he works invisibly, right? I don't always get a glimpse of the glory that God is getting ready to bring to me. I am the one you're talking about, Susan. I am walking and living and breathing and moving right now in my season of hidden favor. It's not visible what God is doing behind the scenes. But can I tell you, as he works invisibly, he is working absolutely. So you need to say that he's working invisibly, but absolutely behind the scenes to work my miracle, to bring my miracle to the forefront of my life. Yeah, I'm walking, I'm living in a season of hidden favor, right? I'm living in a season of personal private editing, where God is, is is editing me privately. Yeah, you know, when a, when, a, when, a, when a book gets edited, okay, it means that there's someone with a very keen eye that is scrutinizing every word on the page to make sure that everything lines up and everything is grammatically correct and everything is spelled correctly and everything makes sense and it's coherent and cohesive in thought. God is saying, I am like the editor in the book of your life because there are books written over our lives and he's making sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. He's making sure that your season is perfected and this God that that we serve, okay? This God that we serve recognizes that there's some things he's doing underneath the surface. And that's why this word says that the word flourish actually refers to something that is blooming, but from underneath, it's getting ready to shoot up, but from under the ground, you can't see it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. You didn't, you didn't sense it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. You did not discern it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that God has closed the door and is not allowing you to see the the work that's going on behind the scenes, but he's been working some things out for you. He's been working out that healing for you. He's been working out that new home for you. He's been working out the deliverance of your children for you. He's been working out the advancement of your ministries for you. He's been working out that job promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. He's been working on that depression that you've been struggling with, that, that anxiety that's been plaguing you. He's been working on some things, hallelujah, behind the scenes. And God says, you're about to flourish. They, oh my God. If you are the righteous.
righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you've been hoping for some things, God says your season of delay has officially ended. You are now moving into your season of acceleration. You are now living in your season of acceleration. I'm here to tell you that your next is now. Oh yeah, yeah, God. Your next is now in the name of Jesus. God says acceleration is going to come as a result of restoration. <laughs> And the way, the better way to frame that is, let me see, how, how is restore or one of the key markers of restoration is acceleration. Some of us have lost so much in this season. Some of us, some of us have been robbed at gunpoint in our lives. I mean, not a physical gun. I don't promote any kind of gun violence, but I'm just talking about you feel like you've been held up by life. You feel like every time you turn around, it's an armed robbery. You just got to throw your hands up and just let the enemy come in and take up whatever he will because whatever he seems to want, he seems to be able to take. And you just have to sit there and be this perpetual victim in, in the story of your own life. But God says, oh, no, 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 no. There is a season of acceleration coming to you. I say to you that the key markers of restoration is acceleration. For many of you, God is saying, I'm about to restore to you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and, and the locust and the caterpillar have eaten and consumed. I'm about to restore to you, according to the prophet Joel, all of the things that have been eroded, amen, in your life by pestilence, by different circumstances and situations. Now, I know for me, the biggest thief of my time are life interruptions in health issues biggest thief of my time. <laughs> I promise you, I told you, I told many of you, I'm, I'm still rebounding from COVID. I'm still experiencing many of the, um, some of the symptoms, like you hear me coughing from time to time. I, I beg your pardon, but I literally can't help it. And until, you know, the Lord heals me completely, I'm, it's just going to be what it is. But, but, but there are some things that set you back. I have a list of things to do this summer. Can I be real with y'all? Let me just be very transparent because I really don't know how else to live, but to be an open book. This summer, I wrote at the beginning of the summer on my dry erase board in my bedroom, I wrote four things that I needed to accomplish by the end of this summer. Now, my summer for me started May 27th because May 26th, I believe, was the last day of school in the school system where I work. And so May 27th, y'all, now today is August 2nd. Let's do the math on that, okay? Four things on my whiteboard. I promise you, I accomplished a massive heaping helping of one. <laughs> one, uno. Just in case English doesn't, yeah, no comprende, uno. In French, un. Okay, I did one of those four things. And it's not for the lack of trying. But when I tell you, if it was not one thing, it was another thing. And if it wasn't another thing, it was the next thing. And before you know it, my time was being eroded. Before I knew it, it was like, it's August 3rd. What, what am I do, Lord? In the words of Bernie Mac, what am I do, Lord? The summer is gone. So, so now I'm like, God, I, I, need, I need you to press the reset button on these goals that I have right here. Because my time has been eroded. And so I was hoping to get all these things done. My hope has now been deferred. I'm feeling some type of way. I'm, I'm struggling in my very soul. But the Lord tells me <laughs> he's still working with me. He's restoring to me the time that COVID has taken. He's restoring to me the time that some other health issues that I've had even prior to COVID has taken all of the doctor's visits, all of the money on the co-pays for the doctor's visits. Because for some of us, we got to pay the doctor a copay. We got to pay the hospital that the doctor works in a copay. And heaven forbid they write you a prescription. When you go to Walgreens or Dwayne Reed or CVS or wherever they send you, you got to pay a copay. My goodness. I tell you, these are years. These are things that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar have eroded and eaten away. But I hear God say he is redeeming. He is redeeming and restoring your time. He is redeeming Susan and restoring my time and my resources in the name of Jesus. There is a season of accelerated promises that is coming to you. Why? Because you are, are being moved and shifted 
out of a season of delay. Can I say this to you? This is what you need to understand at 8.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The reason, and I'm only talking to those to whom this applies, the reason why you are being moved and shifted and catapulted into your season of acceleration is because you have been belabored and, and encumbered by a season of delay. Am I talking to anybody who's been waiting on something a long time and there's been a spirit of delay that's been sitting on your money, sitting on your finances, sitting on your progress, sitting on your promotion, sitting on your peace, sitting on your joy, sitting on your restoration, sitting on your hope, sitting on a whole bunch of things, sitting up on your kids, sitting on your marriage, sitting on your mind. It's just been sitting on stuff, sitting up on your ministry. It's just been sitting up in your church right there on the front pew, just sitting up there in your church, got his foot cocked up on the pew in front of it and just looking at you, you where you think you going. Where you think you're going? You think the members going to start tithing? Yeah, let me see. I'm going to send COVID. Delay. <laughs> okay. The house you're trying to buy. What you think you buying? You think you're going to get that house? Yeah. Um, bad economic situation. How about we're in a recession? How about uh, interest rates are going up? Bad time to buy a house. Where you think you're going? All of this is what the spirit of delay is mocking. It's sitting there and it's mocking your miracle. For those of you who have been dealing with a foul spirit called delay, that's been mocking the promise of your miracle, I'm here to announce to you tonight that this is now your season of acceleration. God says for those of you that have been, that have been sidetracked, for those of you that have been held back, for those of you who have experienced a blocking and a stopping, okay, in any area of your life, aka known as delay, he says for you, I'm telling you right now, this is your season of acceleration. For those of you who have lost, this is another description. For those of you who have lost anything in this season, for those of you who will feel like life holds you up at gunpoint, every time you turn around, you can't have but a little bit of money. You could barely save anything. Every time you turn around, something's happening. Every time you turn around, the kids need something. Every time you turn around, the bill collector's here. You just paid that rent. You literally just paid that mortgage. How in the world am I getting an email saying, here is the you know a reminder about your next mortgage payment? I literally just paid that. How in the world, right? And it just seems as though every time you turn around, you can't hold on to anything. The word of God says for everything that has been taken from you and eaten up and devoured by those ugly, ugly little pests in the book of Joel chapter one, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, the locust, the, 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 um, what was the other one? Holy spirit. Um, whatever the fourth one is, I can't remember right now. It says, there is a spirit of restoration coming. There is a season of restoration coming in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to you tonight. This is your season of acceleration. Now, let me tell you something. It directly counteracts, as I said before, the season of delay. It directly counteracts the season of delay. But can I tell you that delay, whatever the enemy tries to use for evil, God says, I'll turn it around and I'll make it good. So when the spirit of delay shows up, God uses the spirit of delay as a tool in our lives. When the spirit of delay comes to hinder us, God says, oh, you, you, you want to you wanna create havoc in the atmosphere of my child's life? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to make you work for me. You are now my employee. <laughs> you foul spirit of delay. And God employs the very thing that tried, that came into your life, into my life to try to hinder us. So now delay is on God's payroll. How about you going to work for me? And you're going to become a tool in my hand. And delay has become a tool in the hands of a mighty God to teach us some things. Delay teaches us the virtue of waiting. Delay teaches us the virtue and the weapon of patience. Delay teaches us some things that we can't find or get in any other classroom in life. It teaches us how to, how to do just what David said, how to wait on the Lord and be of exceptionally good courage and wait, I say again, on the Lord. So God uses the things that the enemy sends to be an enemy in our lives as a tool. God will put the, the, the distractions of the enemy on his payroll and make it a tool that sharpens us and makes us better. And so he's been using the tool of delay to teach us some things, to build us up, to teach us how to wait on the promises of God. Because can I tell you something? Whatever we gain without sweat, we will give away without regret. Whatever we gain in life without sweat, 
We will give away, hand away without regret, right? The stuff that comes too easy, if we didn't work for it, if we didn't sweat for it, if we didn't labor for it, we just hand it off like it doesn't mean anything. You ever gave your kid something? Man, look, you ever gave your kid something? And I mean, I mean, nice stuff too. And the next thing you know, five minutes later, it's on the floor. Two days later, it's behind the couch. Or how about they can't find it? What? And you have to go through all of that. Let me tell you something. Ooh. Praise the Lord. It, it takes you to a place. You know what I'm saying? Because they got it without sweat. So they easily lose it, misplace it, or hand it away without regret. And this is what we do. As children of God, our heavenly father, our Abba says, if you don't sweat for this thing right here, if you don't sweat it out, if I don't make you sweat out this season, you will easily hand away the stuff that I have to move all kinds of pieces around the chessboard to get to you. And so in this season, the, the, the spirit of delay was sent to discourage, but now it works for me. It's on my payroll with the 401k plan. And I'm going to use it as a tool to sharpen you, Susan. You're going to learn how to trust me. Because that's what the, the tool of delay, not the spirit, but the tool of delay does in the hand of a righteous God. The tool of delay teaches you how to trust God. Yeah, God, it teaches you how to trust him when you see nothing, hallelujah, that says I'm going to get out of this. When you see nothing that says this is going to get paid, when you see nothing that says that you're going to overcome and make it out, that spirit, that tool of delay in the hands of a mighty God will sharpen, will sharpen you and teach you how to trust him when you can't trace him. It'll teach you how to hold on to the horns of the altar. Can I tell you, it'll teach you how to pray. The tool of delay will teach you how to pray. But when God has finished that, using that tool to sharpen you, he sends in the season that counteracts the season that you've been laboring under and toiling under. OK, he counteracts it with a season of acceleration. And let me tell you what a season of acceleration is. A season of acceleration is a season of prophetic promise. It is a season of prophetic promise. It is a season that says that everything God spoke over you, has written over you or written about you, is about to reveal itself. And your next is now. Yes, God. I need you to put that in the chat right now. My next is now. I'm telling you, acceleration implies speed and distance. Acceleration implies speed and distance over time. So speed refers to the rate at which something moves, whether it's slow or fast. Distance uh, in, uh, or speaks to uh, the, how should I say, the length that something travels, okay? God says the season of acceleration is speaking to the speed at which I'm going to perform this work in your life and the distance that it will go. Oh, come on. I'm, I know I'm, I know I'm preaching right tonight. Somebody better come on with me. Somebody better line up and align their faith with this word right here because I know I'm preaching right. God says, I'm about to perform a mathematical equation, a scientific equation in your life. It is speed plus difference, uh, excuse me, speed plus distance equals time. So if you've got your little notebook that you're writing in right now, or even the corners of the pages of your Bible, or if you've got that note app on your phone, whatever it is, you need to whip that joint out and put this down. The first thing you need to write is this. I am in my season of acceleration. That's the first thing. Then you need to make this public and open proclamation. You need to make this proclamation. And remember, we talked about a proclamation is an open official announcement. It is a public open official announcement. And this is your proclamation. My next is now. And here is the next thing you need to write. Speed plus distance equals time. Because God says that's the equation that is operating over the mathematics on your life, over the season of multiplication that is in your life. God says this is what is getting ready to jump off. Number one, the rate at which something takes place, whether it be slow or fast, that's speed. But God says, you're about to see things moving in your life rapidly. There is going to be a sudden supernatural surge <laughs> in your life. Those three S's, it's going to be sudden, it's going to be supernatural, and it's going to be a surge. You hear what I'm telling you? 
You need to start speaking this stuff over your life right now. I'm almost done. I'm almost there because, you know, it's 852. I'm almost there. But you need to start speaking that. There's going to be a sudden supernatural surge of God's promises. The stuff that you've been waiting on, my God, it's about to come at you like a tsunami. It's about to hit your life like a monsoon. I hear God say it's not even like, it's not even so much a suddenly as it is a shockingly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, because you know you've been waiting on it so long, right? So long to the point where your hope has been deferred and your heart has become diseased and sick and tired and weak and sorrowful. But when the thing that you have been hoping for in God shows up, hey God, when it cometh, the word of God says, when it cometh forth, it is a tree of life, that cedar tree, that tree in Lebanon. But hold up. Oh, I didn't finish. Let me go back. Let me revert to, uh, let me pull up that my app now because. Okay, so Psalm 92 is where we left off. And I was reading to you verses 13 and 14. So this is what I want you to see. Those that be planted, hear me, because remember, he's referring to us and he's referring to the hope that shows up and just overtakes us. He says it becomes like a tree of life. It becomes a river of life. It becomes a source of sustenance. It becomes a source of, of existence for us. Watch verse 13, those that be planted, in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Remember that word flourish means to come up from underneath the ground and shoot up like a, like a spout, right? And a, and a sprout. It just shoots, it breaks through hard ground. God is breaking up the fallow ground around our promises. He's breaking up the fallow and the hard ground around our hopes. And he says something is about to break through because he's the God of the breakthrough. Yeah. Okay. And he says, it's breaking through. You're about to flourish in the courts of our God. But hold on. Verse 14 takes me out the game because here, this is it right here for me. Okay. I will stop and shout the whole place down on verse 14. It says, they shall still hold up. So, so the still implies that there is continuity. The still implies that there is an activity and a work that's been taking place before and it's going to continue and grow with me. So watch this. The blessings of the Lord are expansive. The blessings of the Lord grows with us. It doesn't abandon us. It doesn't just show up at one age and then leave at the next. Watch. It grows with us. It says, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Who am I talking to? We ain't getting younger. We're getting older. OK, we may still be very, very young in our minds because God knows I'm young in my mind and my spirit. And I got young people in my house that I'm, you know, still mothering. And so they keep me young and I love having them around for that reason and, and so much more. But they keep me young. They keep me in tune. They keep me abreast. They keep me relevant. Right. So I feel very, very young. But sometimes your body will slap you upside down and tell you how old you think you are. Mm hmm. <laughs> no, you are all of 50. <laughs> okay. No, you are all of 60. No, 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 love. You might feel 16, but the 16 needs to be flipped around because it's actually 61. The word of God says in our old age, and I don't even deem 60 to be old. I refuse to acknowledge 50 as old. That is rude and disrespectful. I refuse to even acknowledge, to be honest with you, these days, 70 is being old because we are living so much longer now. I mean, we have people, listen to me, in our ministry at Lifeway, we have a woman of God that is 93 years old, a mother in our church, Mother Wilhelmina Galloway, 93, but you wouldn't know it because when she opens her mouth and she starts talking to you, all her faculties are completely intact. The wisdom that pours, the knowledge that pours, the, the, the hilarity that comes out of that lady's mouth is unbelievable. She is so young in heart, so young in spirit and fun to hang out with. So I tell you, it really is a state of mind. But the word of God says that even in your old age, you will still what? Bring forth fruit in old age. But hold on. Let me get to part B of Psalm 92, verse 14, because that was just part A. Told me that no matter how old I get, I could be walking up in my Caleb and Joshua season of 80 years of age, and I'm still bringing forth fruit. My ground is still being broken through in my old age. I'm here to tell y'all, I don't care how old you are, you still have something to look forward to. But now watch verse 14, part B. They shall be fat and flourishing. Hold on. You need to put this in the chat right now. I'm about to gain weight. 
Now, I'm not speaking that prophetically in the sense of physical pounds because the devil is a liar. <laughs> I pray that will go in the reverse. I'm about to lose weight. But in this sense, spiritually speaking, you're about to gain weight in the name of Jesus. You're about to get, God says, I'm about to drop some heavy stuff on you. Can I tell you what the word fat means? The word fat means to increase, to be enriched, okay? It means to increase and to be enriched. And as a matter of fact, I can give you an, um, an even better definition of this because it literally means, oh, excuse me, uh, boom, 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 boom. I'm looking for fat, which is the Hebrew word that dasen, D-A-S-E-N. And it literally means to be fertile and to be rich, to be fertile and to be rich, to grow fat, to become fat. But watch this to become prosperous, but hold on, to anoint. <laughs> that is the meaning of that word, okay? It says that not only in your old age will you still continue to see the manifestation and the bearing of fruit in your life. In other words, everything that you touch will bring forth fruit. And the word of God promises us, hallelujah, in the, in the New Testament, and the fruit shall remain. In other words, you ain't gonna lose nothing you gain in this new season. Not only will you retain and hold on to the fruit and the blessings of God in this season of acceleration, but he says, you're about to gain weight. You're about to get fat up off this thing. Oh, Jesus, yeah, God. You ever heard the term fat cat? You're about to get fat up off the blessings of God. You're about to put on some, he's about to drop something heavy on you. And this is it right now. You are in the season of acceleration where not only is God dropping something heavy, but he says, I'm going to do it swiftly. There is going to be a sudden supernatural surge of the promises of the and the blessings of God breaking through up out the fallow ground of your life. And not just that, but it is going to be released rapidly quickly and honey, honey it's gonna be a yellow yeah, i mean i'm like tongue-tied right now because i just cannot believe how this word is feeding us tonight i'm one minute away from the nine o'clock hour and i need to bring this all to a close i need to tell you that it means to anoint and then here's another meaning it means to take away the ashes from the altar oh my god <laughs> take away the ashes from the altar Right? So the word of God tells that he's come to, he, he's literally come to take us up out of the ashes. This is what God has come to call us up. I have been anointed to preach. It's what Psalm 61 says. He is calling us up out of the ashes of our lives. He said, it means to take away the ashes from the altar. How many of you, my God, have been mourning over some ashes? How many of you have been in a, in a place of mourning from some things that you have lost or hope deferred some stuff that never happened or hasn't happened yet or stuff that the enemy has convinced you will never happen for you come on i'm talking to some folk i know you're saved and many of us don't want to admit it but the truth of the matter is as saved and as sanctified as you are as righteous as you are there have been places and times in your life where you felt like god can do it and will do it for everybody else but he won't do it for me who am i talking to who am i talking to you need to tell the truth you need to tell the truth. Many of us believe in God, but we don't believe God. We believe in God because we know he's real. We believe in God because we know that he exists. Don't nobody have to tell us that he's real. Why? The songwriter said, don't try to tell me that God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me he's not alive. I spoke to him today. He opened up my blinded eyes and set my spirit free. And all I want to know about is the man from Galilee. Yeah, we, we can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord, we know, we know he's real. So we believe in God, but we don't believe God. We don't believe God for the things that we need him to do, right? We've seen him do for everybody else and we can pray everybody else into their promise and we can pray everybody else into their destiny. But when it comes to us, some type of way we feel like God doesn't regard us the way he regards so-and-so or you, you, know, you, you have been so deflated by life and the lack uh, or how, how should I say, or the overabundance of disappointment that it brings you to a place where you feel like, yeah, all right. If he does, he does. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Whatever. <laughs> you you literally lose. You've lost hope. You've lost along with that hope expectation. 
And I know what it's like to have life ride you like a donkey like that. I know what it's like to have life just come sit up on your, your stuff, sit on your heart and just and just suppress it and repress it and oppress it. And, and, and joy has no place to go and hope has no place to go and expectation sits right here because it has no place to go because there's stuff that's been, there's just this disappointment that you've been sitting on top of and beating down your place of joy and your place of hope. And so now you're at a place where you expect nothing from God. I know what that's like. And frankly, I'm fighting back the tears because I can identify with that, not because I heard somebody say it to me. I'm saying this, but I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. I'm telling you what I live, not what I heard. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not preaching to you from a place of overhearing somebody else talk about this. I'm telling you what I know because this is where I walk. <laughs> but I'm also here to tell you that God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of one that he has any reason or or excuse for repenting. He will do just what he says he is going to do in the name of Jesus. And I understand that hope deferred makes the heart sick and weak and diseased and disappointed and low and sad and sorrowful. But when that thing comes up, when that thing that you have been hoping for and praying for comes, it is a tree of life. And the word of God says that in this season, he's about to make you fat. He's about to put some weight, hallelujah, on his promises. He's about to put some weight, some weight on the things that he's been promising you. You are going to gain up. Uh, perspective in this season. You are going to gain uh, the, the promises of God being released on your life in this season. The word of God says that you are about to gain. You're about to become fat in the place called prosperity. You're about to become fat with an anointing that is about to hit you. It literally means to anoint. And then it also means to take away the ashes, the, the ashes, huh, the ashes that we've been sitting in. For so long, hoping and praying and trusting, God said the season of acceleration is here. Accelerated promises are on your life. A season of prophetic promises coming to pass. Quick and rapid release of God's promised word over you. Sudden supernatural surges, hallelujah, manifesting in your life in this season. My God, speed plus distance equals time. I've, I've thrown a lot at you, but I want you to be encouraged because hope deferred doesn't just leave you after a sermon. Hope deferred doesn't just get up and walk out the room after somebody gave you an encouraging word. You've spent years dealing with deferred hope. It spent years sitting on you. And now the word of God says, I need you to know that because you have been living in a season of delay and because you have been hampered by a season of loss, right? And deterioration, God says, I'm about to restore and I'm about to accelerate, okay? And restoration, a season of restoration is always accompanied by acceleration. When God gets ready to restore you, he's gonna accelerate you. I'm only speaking to those who can identify with what I have described tonight. There are many of you that probably can't. You're sitting here saying, Susan, things have not been better. And I praise God for you. And I thank God for your testimony. I want to be just like you when I grow up. But for right now, I know I'm positioned in a place where there is a real struggle, where there are real struggles in my life, where there have been real seasons, prolonged seasons of delay, where that very same spirit of piss God that I, I taught on last year, okay, that spirit of almost there, yeah, when that spirit hits your life and, and everything looks like you're this close, you're inches away and, and, and you're almost there, but you never actually arrive at the place of promise. You never actually cross over into that promised land. That's a frustrating place to be. And that place will take you some places in your own mind that you can't find your way back from. If you're not careful, your heart will become diseased. If you're not careful, your heart will become sorrowful as the word of God describes it, right? And there is no tree springing up. But I hear God speaking Psalm 92 over you, verses 12, 13, 14, and 15, that you, my God, in the name of Jesus, will be like a palm tree flourishing in the courts of our God. And according to verse 14, not only will you continue to prosper and bear fruit, but you will still bear fruit even even in your old age, the latter part of that promises in the name of Jesus that you're about to get real fat and you're about to flourish. You're about to put on some weight, the weight of the anointing. Yes, God is about to be accelerated over your life. You won't have to wait much longer because the season of weight is coming to an end. The season of acceleration obliterates delay. 
Delay cannot exist where acceleration, because acceleration implies progress, motion, movement. You understand? It implies advancement. And so there is no way in the world that delay and advancement can coexist in the same space. The season of acceleration has come to literally serve notice on your season of delay that I am now here to move this woman of God forward. I'm now here to move this man of God forward. And what you have been experiencing in, in the form of setback, OK, God says the wheels have now been put in motion and your next is now. And so now you are walking in a place of advancement. You are walking in a place where things will be um, moving speedily and rapidly and there'll be surges to the point where you may even feel overwhelmed. I was speaking to a sister um, in Christ and I said to her, I was encouraging her and I says, you know, right now you feel so terribly overwhelmed in your life. And it's not a bad thing, but you're overwhelmed because God is pouring and giving you so much spiritual download that it almost seems like you can't absorb it all at the same time. And you're feeling like, okay, God, you're, you're talking faster than I can write. Okay, God, you're talking faster than I can dream. Okay, God, you're talking faster than I can get the loan. You're talking faster than I can put this in place. You're talking faster than I can get the ministry launch. You're talking, talking faster than I can put the team together. You're talking faster than I can get the job. You're talking faster than I can enroll in school to get that, you know, to finish my degree. You're talking, you're talking too fast. God, hold up, hold up. Hold up. I'm trying to write the vision. I'm trying to make it plain, but it's, and it's overwhelming you. And so God is just pouring up. And this is your season. In the, of acceleration. What I'm saying to you is you have reached, see, delay has been sitting on your life so long that God says delay has brought you, delay has robbed you of time, but delay has also brought you time. See, because when you're delayed, you got plenty of time to sit and plan. <laughs> when you're delayed, you have plenty of time to sit and work stuff out. Okay. And so if we're not using our season of delay correctly, okay, it's no longer a tool, it's a hindrance. And so it's serving the purposes of the enemy. But when delay is employed by God and being used as a tool to sharpen you, you better use that season where you're not moving as a season to get educated about the things that God is wanting you to do, to in, in, inform yourself about the policies of heaven and what God is getting ready to shift and turn around and where you need to be when the season of acceleration is released. And so now in this season of acceleration, God is saying, what were you doing in your season of delay? Why are you overwhelmed? I'm pouring because you should, you should have been working on some stuff, <laughs> right? Right. You've had this vision for a long time. You've had this dream for a long time. You didn't just come up with this yesterday. The dream has been delayed and I'm using delay as a tool. So the enemy sent delay to discourage you and break you. But I've turned it around and employed it and put it on my payroll. And now it's got a 401k plan and health benefits. And it's used. It's being used by me in my hand as a tool to sharpen you. And so in this season of delay, use the convenience of time to work some stuff out about that dream that you have not yet seen come to pass. So that when your season of acceleration hits your life, you're not sitting here going, well, wait, God, hold up, God, you're talking too fast. No, God has said, I can't wait. Because we've been waiting. Remember, we just came out of that season called waiting. Now I'm just dropping on you everything you need to know to go. Everything you need to know to go. And so you're going to feel a bit inundated because God is just downloading, downloading, downloading in this season into your spirit. But I want you to know that he's saying the weight has left the room. I can't wait anymore. I'm fast tracking you. This is your season of acceleration. I know this was not, you know, a, a word to swing from the chandeliers from, but I'm here to tell you right now that God is speaking to somebody because there is somebody that lines up your life is reflective of this word. I have literally sat down and described your whole life to you. And you're sitting here going, oh my gosh, he's so talking to me right now. I really am. The Holy Spirit really is speaking through me to you and saying this to you. This is the word. And it really is a word of warning. And it's a word of encouragement at the same time. I'm warning you that I'm getting ready to put some weight. I'm getting ready to drop some heavy stuff on you. According to Psalm 92 and verse 14, when he says, you shall be made fat. That word fat means to be weighted. That word fat means to be anointed. That word fat means to increase. That word fat means to be enriched. That word fat means to become fertile. That word fat means to be removed from the ashes. OK, and so God is saying that he is about to do a whole lot of something for you and it's going to happen speedily, quickly. It's going to happen in surges, in overwhelming waves of blessings and increase and promotion and, and upgrades in your life. And when it gets ready to happen, you have to be ready to move. So I'm speaking to that person tonight who has been waiting on that house. OK, I'm speaking to you specifically. And I'm saying to you, you just need to start packing. You need to start packing, okay? Don't wait until the pre-qualification letter comes. You need to start literally um, downsizing 
You need to start packing up some stuff, get some boxes, start packing some things away. And then there are other things you just need to put them to the side of the road because you haven't literally used them in a year or two. And if you haven't used it in a year, two or three, you really don't need it. You need to donate it, find a goodwill, find a salvation army, put the things in somebody else's hand and be a blessing. Because God says, when I get ready to take you into your new house, not only am I going to give you what you've sown, not only am I going to give that back to you, but I'm going to give it back to you in excess. And I'm going to blow your mind with how I will provide for you on the other side of this Jordan. I'm talking to somebody tonight and I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I know I'm talking right. So you just need to start preparing in your season of what seems to be delay. You need to start preparing for the move that is getting ready to come because God says acceleration is going to take place. And I'm speaking prophetically because here's what's going to happen. You're going to be positioned credit wise to be able to qualify for a house. And then the Holy Spirit says that the approval for that loan is going to come through quickly. The approval for that mortgage, that pre-approval is going to come through quickly and you're not going to expect it. And then you, and then the real estate agent that you have hired to help you find that home is going to find that house quicker than you expected it. And you're not going to believe that the house of your dreams came so quickly because God says you're living in a season of accelerated promises. See, you've been waiting so long and things have been delayed so long and that house has been delayed so long. You've been paying rent for so long and now you're in the season of maturation. You're in a season of multiplication, not addition, because God only deals in multiplication. That's why he says to Abraham, I will multiply, hallelujah, your seed as what? The stars of the sky and as the sands of the sea, right? And so multiplication is the math that God deals in. He doesn't deal in division. He deals in multiplication. And so when it comes, it's going to come rapidly and it's going to come in in the form of super Superabundance, and so you need to be prepared to take in. I'm here to tell you, many of us are asking God for more, but we don't have the capacity for more. In order for us to pour more of something into a glass, the glass has to have room to receive it. Otherwise, there's an overflow of excess, and there's a loss, and there's spillage. But you need to prepare in this season because God is coming, and when He comes, He's not coming empty-handed. When He comes, He's coming quickly, He's coming rapidly, and He's coming in surges, and it's going to come in waves. And you need to prepare because that house is going to come quicker than you think, and then the closing is going to come quicker than you think. The, the money for the down payment and the money for the closing is going to come easier than you think. And God says, when it does come, okay, in your season of delay, he was expecting some measure of preparation because it's what you've been praying for. It's what you've been hoping for to the point where your heart done fell sick and almost passed out. And, 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 but because I'm a God who fulfills all of my promises, I'm going to do just what I said. And so therefore, the latter part of this verse belongs to you. When the desire comes, it's going to spring up in your heart like a tree of life. And in your life is a tree of life. And you do need to be ready for the tree. You need to be ready for the tree. Do you have a place for God to plant the tree? Is there even a garden? God is saying you need to prepare. Start, start tilling your ground. Prepare for what God is getting ready to plant in your life. All right? So that's a prophetic word for someone in the name of Jesus. And I stand with you and I receive it in the name of Jesus. And somebody needs to get happy off of that in the name of Jesus. We thank God that all the promises of God, they are yea and they are amen. We are at the 915 hour on this beautiful, beautiful night. So I'm going to close off this word of God by telling you that the spirit of the Lord has spoken. There's nothing left for Susan to say because the spirit of the Lord has already spoken. So I just want to pray with you right now. Let's come into agreement over this word in the name of Jesus. See, we're coming into agreement because there's nothing more powerful than the prayer of agreement. When we agree as touching anything on earth, it is already accomplished in heaven. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I touch with my brothers and my sisters in Christ right now, and I come into spiritual and heavenly agreement with them. I want to thank you, O oh God, that even now the policies of heaven are being revealed unto them. You are giving them understanding concerning the season of acceleration that they have now been catapulted into. That is right. I said catapulted into. Literally imagine yourself in a slingshot or being fired out of a cannon. God says that is how quickly and that is how um, rapidly it's going to happen. And you are going to go great distances in the spirit realm because of what God is getting ready to do in your life through this season of acceleration. So Father, we stand on on this word. We believe this word. We trust you for this word because you are a God in whom we can put all of our trust. And God, even now, we just decree and declare that this is our season of acceleration. This is our season, oh God, for being catapulted into the goodness of God, the greatness of God, and we shall flourish in the courts of our Lord. Father, even as we age, the fruit, the, the, the fruit, oh God, of our lives will continue to maturate and grow and manifest. And God, I thank you that even according to your word in Psalm 92 and verse 14, we are about to become fat and we are about to flourish in the name of Jesus. There is something breaking 
through the hard ground of our lives and it is sprouting up. It is coming up, Father, and it is revealing itself. And we are in a place where we are positioned to receive the harvest that is coming for you are indeed the Lord of the harvest. Speak to our ground, coax our seed and our harvest out of the ground in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you. We give you praise, oh God. We walk in this season. This season is a season of fulfillment where all the words of God and everything that you have spoken over us will come to pass in Jesus' name. I want to encourage those of you who have heard this word tonight to say amen. Amen means, and so it is, and it is so. I want you to just say amen in the name of Jesus. It is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. All the promises of God, they are yea and they are amen. And so I trust in the Lord tonight and I give God praise. And I pray that you receive this word in the spirit in which it was given. This is your season of acceleration in Jesus name. And so I just speak it over those of you who are here with us tonight. I thank God for you, Sister Anna Moore, being here with us tonight. Thank God for you, um, Brother Aaron Reed, again, for being here with us this evening. There's so many of you agreeing and, and coming into um prayerful and hopeful agreement with this word. I extend to you tonight the rope of hope in the name of Jesus. You will not lose hope. I know some of you, your hearts are breaking. Some of you have um put the, uh, well, let me see if I'm telling the truth about this. I was looking for the, um, the different emojis, <laughs> right? Um, I thought there was a like a tear emoji in here, those of you who have who have expressed tears. Um, but you know, some of us have been, really been sowing in tears. And God says you're about to reap in joy in the name of Jesus. So I speak it over over you, Sister Anissa Jensu. I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus over you, uh um brother or sister Toppin, I'm not quite sure. I thank God for Almond Jewel. Seems like I've seen that name before. God bless you. Um Duncan. Uh, Trudine Duncan, God bless you. I'm speaking that over you. Nadine Hill, I'm declaring that over you in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring that over my spiritual mom, Elder Fawcett. I thank God for you, Sister Marcia, because I'm speaking that over your life. Sister Maya Daniel, in the name of Jesus, woman of God, I am speaking that over your life. This is family here. This is my cousin Gwyneth. I declare that over your life. Yes, God, you are living in a season of accelerated promises, and it's almost going to seem overwhelming to you at times. Like God is just doing too much all at once, and you can't handle it. But God is saying, no, that I, I can no longer support a season of delay. I'm going to say that one more time. God says he can no longer support and no longer sustain a season of delay in your life. There's too much for you to do. There's too much to be done in the kingdom. You understand? And the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. And he has certain ones that he has full confidence in. And that's you. And that's me. And he's saying, yeah, I don't have time to, to for, for the waiting and the preparation and See, that was what the, the season of delay was all about. We were supposed to be getting prepared then. Now it's just time to move. And so I'm warning some of you. This is a word of encouragement, but it's also a word of warning. Get ready, because I promise you, God is no longer supporting a season of waiting. This is a new season. There has been a shifting. There has been a shifting of dynamics, a paradigm shift. And so we're moving in a whole different wave now. God is saying, it's time to move. It's time to move on some projects. I don't know who I'm talking to. But my God, it is time to move on some major projects. I see it, I'm not sure if that's you, uh, Sister Maya Daniels. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's you. I don't know why your name literally just popped into my mind again, but literally I'm saying to you or whomever this word is for, it's time to move on some major project. There's been some stuff that you have been talking to people about. I, I'm, again, I'm not sure if this is you, Sister Maya, but you have been talking to some people and brainstorming and spitballing and trying to figure out how to get some stuff done, but there has not been enough movement. God says there's been a lot of chatter and a lot of talking around this, but there needs to be some movement now. And years ago, there was a man of God that said to myself and my husband, y'all need to make a move that moves God. And I'm saying to you, Sister uh, Daniel, tonight, I'm sorry if I'm referring to you in the wrong way, Minister Maya. Daniel, um, or not giving you um, your proper title, but I'm saying to you, and please receive this in the spirit in which I'm saying it, there are some things God says you need to make a move that moves God. You need to move right now and do something that says, God, I'm, I'm not just talking, I'm not just hoping, and I'm not just wishing, but I'm actively taking steps to make this happen, okay? I don't know who else. 
I don't know who else I'm speaking to, but there are just a few of you. And God is saying there's some major, there's like, there, there's like things that are considered, at least by your standards, a major project. A major project in the name of Jesus. And I hear God say <laughs> that you need to just get that thing done. Get it done. Stop talking. Stop skating around it. You know, stop hoping around it and just get it done. This is the spirit of the Lord. Now, normally, if I feel like God is done, I'll just shut my mouth and move on. But that just literally, he just dropped that in my spirit. Okay. Okay. Amen. 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 He just dropped that in my spirit. Y'all got to move. You have to make some, there's some of you that need to make some serious life changes. Okay. That's another word. Who am I talking to tonight? I need, you know, I need to feel like I'm not crazy. Uh, I see you sister. Uh, yes. Yes. Minister Daniel. I see you saying you received that word. So amen. I'm not, I'm not um, outside of my lane um, in saying what I said. Okay. I'm speaking to someone else that God says it may not be a project, but it's a major life change. There is a major life change of weight loss. There is a major life change of um, a, a, a renewed eating habit, a, a different eating lifestyle, major life change in terms of habits that need to be broken, major life change in terms of even a career move. This is what I hear the Holy Spirit saying, that you have been sitting in this place of, and I hate to use the word comfort, it's actually not comfortable. You're actually very, very uncomfortable. You don't even like the fact that you're still in the same place. You need to move, but it's, it's, it's not so much comfortable as it is familiar. And so the spirit of familiarity has become your enemy. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. I literally felt that surge right up my right arm, go to my left arm. The spirit of familiarity has now become your enemy. And the spirit of the Lord is saying, because you are familiar with the place where you are and you have been stuck there for so long, you are unwilling to move. Because anything that is unfamiliar feels unsafe and uncomfortable. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say that in this season of acceleration, you better be willing to move because he's not waiting on anybody. You understand? You may just lose your place in line. He's not waiting on anybody. And so I know I'm speaking to someone tonight that's been literally comforted and nursing that place of familiarity. You sit there, you hold on to it like a security blanket because God forbid the environment changes or your boss changes or... You know, you may not know where your income is coming from for a couple of months while God reworks some things. It's a, it's a terrifying move, but God says it's a necessary move. You need to make that change right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody, somebody better get very, 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 very violent in your faith tonight and start moving forward like you know the God that you serve is about to do something and accelerate you. Yeah, because you are on you are on a spiritual conveyor belt that's about to start going real fast. And God is going to move you from one season to a next so quickly that you literally can't keep up with the move of God. And it's a blessing. But in your life, it feels like oh, you, you just. Mm. But God says it's coming. Matter of fact, it's here because your, your next is now. Right. And so some of us are still sitting in our now and we're praying about our next. And God says, while you were yet praying, <laughs> I made a move. While you were yet praying, I made a move. While David was yet in his father's pasture killing bears and tending sheep. God slipped the crown over his head and he didn't even know it. He had been elevated and moved from shepherd to king and didn't even know it because he's just chilling on the backside of his daddy's desert, his pasture, just tending some other man's sheep. And God says that while he was doing that, he literally shifted his whole position. And David was unaware until he had to send the prophet to say, hey, king, <laughs> hey, shepherd, you're now king. Right. And so God is doing that right now in the lives of many. Right. Yeah. And I'm speaking to those. I'm speaking to those tonight who are openly confessing that you are in a place called stuck. And you can see it. God says people can see it in your eyes. People can see where you when you talk to them, people can see that you're stuck. But in the name of Jesus, I, I pray right now for a lifting and I pray for a moving.
And I thank you, oh God, that you will not allow us to remain stuck or a prisoner to our moment, but you will allow us, oh God, to advance in the things of God. And not only will we advance, but there will be a rapid movement and, 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 and capitulation forward in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for those who feel as though they are stuck. I thank you for those who feel as though they are in a hover, hovering or, or holding pattern that you're just hovering over your existence and you're not moving, you're not advancing, you're not necessarily going backwards, but you see no progress. And even the lack of progress becomes a place where our hope is taken from us. So I extend to you through the word of God, the rhema and the logos tonight, the rope of hope. I want you to keep hoping because God has thrown a rope out the window and he's saying, listen, you don't have to stay stuck. You can move. You have actually been shifted. Your next is now. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise and we thank you in Jesus name. Listen, I want to encourage you to be a seed sower tonight. If you feel as though this word has blessed you, I want you to go ahead and sow the seed of sharing. <laughs> Hit the share button. Please let somebody else get this word. Last week, I challenged you. I challenged 30 people to share this broadcast. Literally 29 shared. I almost hit that. You almost helped me reach that goal. Last week's broadcast um, was a tremendous blessing to many. And I'm telling you, it was ta it, it spoke about waiting on our bread. So if you want to be that person who is the 30th person to share that broadcast, go ahead and visit my um, Grace with Fire page, Susan Graham Ministry page, and you can share that broadcast. But I want you to share this one as well, okay? I'm looking for that same 30. Come on, the moment you share, I want you to just put it in the chat and let me know that you shared it. Because this word, if it's helping you, it's got to be helping somebody else, okay? So I want you to connect this word and, and share it in the life of someone else. Please do that tonight. And then, of course, there's always a tangible um, way to share. If this ministry has blessed you in any way, you can sow season to Susan Graham Ministry simply by visiting my website tonight. If you go to my website, there is literally a tab, um, Grace with Five. Fire.org is my website. Graced, it's on the screen there for you. You can't make a mistake. It's right there. You can visit my website and it actually shows you four different ways in which you can give. And so into this ministry, it also lets you know how you can connect as a partner because this is a partner supported ministry and support every single month with the small seed of $20. If you don't want to do that, you can sow a one-time seed to a dollar sign, First Lady Sue. You can do that as well. That's dollar sign, First Lady Sue. You can sow a seed that way as well. However you choose to partner, however you choose to be a blessing, I just encourage you to do so tonight. I want to let you know something. And, you know, I never ask for a specific amount because I just want you to sow a seed, not necessarily into me, but into the word that you just heard, the ground of the word that you heard. You put a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, ten dollars, I don't care what you put, but put a, let me tell you something. I'm going to say this to you, then I'm going to go. We just came out of our holy convocation. I'm gonna give you this testimony. We just came out of our holy convocation um, about what, two, three weeks ago, right? In Orlando, Florida, United Covenant Churches of Christ Incorporated. And I'm telling you, Bishop Todd Hall preached twice and he challenged us twice. And then Bishop G.E. Livingston, our presiding prelate, preached and challenged us to sow seeds. And I'm telling you, if you ever attend the convocation, not necessarily United, but any convocation anywhere, you have to come to really be a sower and a giver. And I tell you, it challenged my wallet. It challenged my pocketbook. But the man and the men of God said, if you sow this seed in this quantity, in this amount of days, you're going to see this. When I tell you they did not lie, when I tell you when I hit the doorsteps of my house and came back from Orlando, the blessings of the Lord started making my life rich, not necessarily monetarily, but it added no sorrow to me. And I'm here to tell you that seed sowing works. And I'm still seeing the seeds of my sacrifice working for me. When I tell you I see massive doors opening, when I tell you I see the opinion of man changing concerning my finances for things that both Overseer Graham and myself are trying to do in this new season of acceleration, I'm seeing God do some ridiculous things off of seeds that I did not think I could afford to sow. But I'm here to tell you that even if you don't have the amount you want to give, you need to sow something somewhere in ground that's going to yield a harvest for you in the name of Jesus. Don't be stingy with God because you can't out beat his, you can't out give God and you can't out give God. And so I want you to know right now that God is working through your seeds. Continue to sow, continue to trust, continue to believe. Amen. In this season, because he's doing it for you. God bless you. I'm going to leave you with this word. This is your season of acceleration.